In today's aviation recap, there's a damaged major international airline that wants to turn around its fortunes, a carrier battling aircraft groundings looking towards the future, and Cathay Pacific launching a new exciting route. Why not begin there before getting into that damaged airline I speak of? So Cathay Pacific has announced that a new route will launch from its home in Hong Kong for 2025. This will see the carrier serve Dallas-Fort Worth International for the very first time, with flights commencing on the 24th of April next year. Dallas becomes the sixth destination served by the Hong Kong-based airline towards the United States, but if you're considering broader North America, well, it becomes the eighth. The airline already serves the likes of Boston, Chicago, Los Angeles, New York, and San Francisco in the US. And if we've moved just up north across the border, well, Toronto and Vancouver form part of its Canadian network. The A350-1000 will be deployed on service between the two locations. The route is available for booking, but is still subject to relevant regulatory approval. CX-898 will depart Hong Kong at 4.05, arriving into Dallas at 5.55. The magnificent thing about time difference, but that will only be increased when you look at the returning leg that will arrive some days later. Cathay notes that the flights will initially operate four times a week, which is a pretty modest amount to begin with. Departures are going to occur on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Cathay believes there's great potential across the Americas, and as such, is aligning itself best as possible with overall recovery from the pandemic. It has not been looking to just rebuild, but also you've got to consider grow its market. Delta is known as one of the busy airports right around the world, and Cathay they believes there's more than enough demand to serve this location. However, the decision to move forward with this route was not solely based on the assumption that those would fly into Dallas only on their aircraft. Why? Well, Cathay knows that Dallas is an essential hub for key airline partners and fellow One World Alliance member in American Airlines. So as a result, Dallas-Fort Worth actually will make onward connectivity possible to over 190 domestic destinations and stretching that further to 11 destinations in Central and South America. So there's a lot on offer for customers and Cathay are thrilled about the prospects looking forward. And now over to Lufthansa. This is a group that plays an instrumental role in our global aviation industry and is home to several leading international carriers. However, arguably the leader in the business, which is the German flag carrier of Lufthansa, has also been the most problematic. Lufthansa's issues have been very well documented, including concerns about money bleeding and a rapidly deteriorating brand image. The demise of the Lufthansa brand is similar to the struggles experienced maybe at British Air ways in the 2010s. Travellers who previously relied on Lufthansa services have been moving away from the flag carrier, citing poor internal decisions that reduced value for money. In fact, in my recent travels, I had the absolute pleasure of speaking to a few viewers on the channel that were German. Each of them shared a very similar distaste for what Lufthansa had become for all those aforementioned reasons, and stated that they now strongly avoided the flag carrier. And while this is only a handful of people, I have no doubt that many share a very similar feeling. Lufthansa, remember, is a full-service airline. However, compared to other leaders and full-service operators around the world, its quality is highly critiqued alongside what the airline has as substantial add-ons, issues with changing fares, and so much more that just shouldn't be present for an airline that's price point is so high. However, now a rebuild appears to be in full service. Wing. The Lufthansa leader has stated that a turnaround is underway. He argued that Lufthansa must be the flagship, but he understands that this title has gone missing quite considerably in recent times. The airline hopes that in time for its 100th birthday, which will come in 2026, it'll once more be regarded as a flagship and a state-of-the-art company. This is ultimately a bold and rather ambitious time frame, considering the airline's struggles are so incredibly deep-rooted and won't just be, say, an overnight turnaround. 
around. However, the airline's state has gotten out of control in recent years, and pressures have been placed on it, with now the realisation change is required and is being seen as the next step, it's important. The last 12 months have also seen costs rise. You've got to remember that the airline has rectified contracts, which while ultimately have improved morale and were always going to need to be done, it has cost the airline dearly. While Lufthansa has struggled massively due to its own decision as backfiring, it has equally faced great adversity, which for things it hasn't had control over. Arguably with Airbus and Boeing facing issues across their supply chains, they've been unable to deliver planes on time, and airlines such as Lufthansa have been hurting. The German carrier hasn't been afraid to be rather vocal about the impact it has faced because of this. With hundreds of millions lost each month, the airline has also had to change how it operates, and not necessarily for the better. Could this be viewed as very simply an excuse? Well, some may, and some may also look at it as the airline being upfront, and it doesn't excuse everything we've seen take place, but it is one fundamental element that has to be taken into account. Most notably, this is all related to the retention of older aircraft that are less efficient, and from an airline standpoint, they cost more to operate, which is absolutely a no-go as we approach the mid-2020s. From certification troubles also with the 777X, this has just been another avenue which Lufthansa has had limited control over, and now they're seeing six to seven years of delay before that aircraft is expected to arrive. On to the final story, and Air Baltic is battling aircraft groundings as it moves into the 2024 2025 winter season and is going to be drafting in additional capacity to cope. The groundings are not something that needs talked about too much. I'm sure you're already aware that because of those Pratt and Whitney engine troubles on the geared turbofan engines on aircraft such as the A220, well, airlines like Air Baltic have had to park up planes with no real end in sight. And to now try and sort out their short-term needs, they're looking to add up to five aircraft this coming winter schedule to cope. The need for backup does strictly relate to engine availability, but one of the biggest challenges is not the fact that these A220s are on the ground, but just the lack of certainty when it comes to a fix actually arriving. And you may think to yourself, well, is that because then there are difficulties with launching new routes? Absolutely. But also, it affects their ability to really dive into the leasing market market because they don't know how long they need these aircraft for. And while you'll have some leasing providers that can be incredibly flexible with short-term, say, agreements such as what Air Baltic is looking to secure, there are others that are always going to remain a little bit more hesitant. And Air Baltic is in a situation where do they, say, get a plane for six months, a year, or two years? And it means securing jets under a wet lease can be difficult. Air Baltic has stated, though, that things could be a lot worse, and if anything, they're actually seeing some form of improvement on the situation as a whole, but they still do require some additional capacity to come in and help them out. Remember, Air Baltic is an airline that only operates Airbus A220s, so that is important to note that they are a strong relier on the type. That'll conclude today's aviation recap. You can let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Thanks a bunch for your support here on the channel. Please take care, do be safe, and I'll see you same place, same time tomorrow for your latest industry news. And flight, and we'll fly.